happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining me here. Tonight we are continuing on the Aurifil block of the month. So this is the block of the month, Verona. And uh, we are uh, working on this tonight. We are going to do some applique. So thanks for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. Uh, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. I'm here for about an hour and I work on projects from beginning to end. So thanks again, you guys. Continuing the Aurifil block of the month. So this is uh, April's block, Verona. And uh, uh, it is, uh, we, we finished the background and now we just need to do that applique and then there is some fun quilting with it as well. So here's, we had a hard time picking fabrics yesterday. So we were going for, it's supposed to be like three colors of mauve and I couldn't find anything that resembled mauve. So here's, here's our sky and background. <laughs> I figured the pinky and kind of this brown, I don't know, if you stirred every color this of this together, if this if every color on here was paint and you stirred it together, you'd probably get mauve, <laughs> don't you think? I think so. So now we just have to put, here's our little template, we have to put our little city on there. So that will be what we are doing today. I think I might have just enough Steema Seam 2 to work on this project. That's that stabilizer or that, that uh, fusible interfacing that will help us stick this to it. I, I was thinking I'd have to do it all with glue just because I'm out of materials. But I think this is these are my scraps, little bits of scraps left, and I think this might be just enough uh, to do this. And I think that, that might be a little bit helpful. So we are going to do the... We are gonna do the applique tonight. So thanks again, guys. Oh, and thanks for everyone who purchased a uh, um, a face mask. My brother made face masks and we have them up in our shop. Um, and uh, you can check those out. There's a discount if you buy more than one. And uh, we have a few left. We're out of the filters. We did buy more of the filter, the filthy filter fabric. Uh, you can uh, check out filthy, F-I-L-T-I dot com if you wanted to order your own uh, fabric here. But we're ordering a bunch and we'll have it all uh, cut up as filters again. So uh, hopefully that'll be soon. We will let you know when that is. And uh, yep, there's a few more of the masks in the in the shop. So thanks everyone who purchased them. Uh, it's going to my brother um, who's unemployed now because of all the COVID-19 stuff. So he uh, uh, will definitely appreciate, uh, appreciate you guys helping him out. So, all right, turning you around. All right, there's our crazy bin from yesterday trying to find a mob in there. Um, all right, and uh, Got the iPad out, so that's gonna help me tonight. I'm just using this to go over the instructions. So this is a free pattern. It's on Aura Buzz. So if you look here, Aura Buzz, that is uh, the Aura Fill website for the blog. And we are all the way uh, to getting the silhouette on. And last night we started the prep for that. So we, we um, I'm doing it with freezer paper. So here is the freezer paper template. So this is just like literal freezer paper from the grocery store. It's glossy on one side and uh, it's just like paper on the other side. And you can fuse it to fabric temporarily and use it as a template. So that's that's what we're gonna do here with um, with the black or the my charcoal gray fabric. So here is the fabric that is going to be our our kind of buildings here. And I, I do like that idea um, that someone here had yesterday, having these lines. There's lines on here, having them go vertical because then it'll look like kind of part of the cityscape. We'll get that same feel. So I'm going to press, find a, I have a lot of this fabric. I'm going to try and find a spot where I've already worked on it. Oh, here we go. Now it's getting messy. Let's go there. Let's go here. All right. Let's uh, get the pressing mat out. 
so now this fabric is not a very friendly fabric. Uh, it's not like quilting weight cotton. It, it's got more of a flow. It's, it's a little stretchier. We think it's kind of like a, a linen uh, cotton blend maybe. Well, I should put this this way because our, um, our city is kind of wide. So it doesn't, it, it frays a little bit more. It was probably maybe not the best uh, material to do this project with, but I just like the gray <laughs> and I had it, so we're doing it. All right, I'm thinking I wanna get this little area right here. I might be able to scooch up on there and that'd be a good way to use use that scrap. It doesn't really look I need, like I need to iron this really at all. Just make sure there's no cuts. Nope, I think we're probably good right about there. Ugh, I'm going to be cutting a huge chunk out of this, but that's kind of the name of the game. When you're working on a quilt that you don't know what the next block is going to be, and you're using the same fabrics, you're going to get some weird cuts like this. So I suspect we'll be able to use that again later sometime. All right, I'm just going to fuse this down, and immediately it, it starts sticking. And you can, this is removable, so uh, that's what's kind of neat about the freezer paper process. All right. I think that's fine like that. If this starts to peel up, I can always, um, I can always just fuse it with some heat again. All right, and before I get too far, I think I'm going to just trim it out right here. So I'm not really trimming it. I'm just kind of getting rid of the excess fabric. I will trim it along the lines um, in a little bit. First, I want to see if I have enough fusible to kind of outline this edge here. So what fusible, what fusible interfacing, what that will do is it will make sure at least the edges are, are really stuck down and it won't fray everywhere right away. Uh, it'll at least keep it in place while we sew it. Yep, shiny side down, Sherry. So I drew on the papery side and the shiny side is what sticks and it, it just comes right up. It comes off. It doesn't harm the um, fabric at all. If you're scared that it might harm your fabric, just do a little test somewhere. You can reuse it. So if you have to do like, if you have to do like six of these, you could probably still use the same template each time. So that's kind of neat. All right, there we go. Now I can put the all this bulky fabric away. Let's get this. Oh, that got cut off already. Didn't see that. All right. So next up, I want to grab my steam -a seam too. So this is all that I have left. This is a um, this is a fusible interface, uh, and the, typically how a fusible interface works is there will be paper on one side and then kind of glue glue dots on the other side. So you would fuse the one side down, then cut out your shape, remove the paper, and then fuse the other side down. So it's kind of like a um, a film of glue that goes between your applique piece and your, your background fabric. So I only have this much left. <laughs> so I, I am just going to do it on the edge. You could do the whole entire piece, but I am going to try and do it just around the edge, uh, which is going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just kind of trim a little, a few pieces like this off. I should maybe not use this nice scissors. Yep, we're going to switch to the paper scissors. And I think I'm going to just start putting it along these edges. I don't quite know how this is going to work. However, this particular brand is going to work better, I think, just because uh, it is sticky as well as fusible. So the benefit of that is... Uh, you can stick it in place like a sticker before you do the final fusing. So what I think I'm going to actually do is let's just pull one of the sides of the paper off. So right here, 
I have it it's sticky there and I think I might just hmm maybe this would work easier doing it this way I'm not sure it would be let's trim a piece what I want to do is basically have it cover my line here I want it to cover like this line and it's sticky so I think I'm gonna just stick it on and then peel it off right away in theory I would fuse it on first but I think in this case since it is sticky I think I'm gonna just treat it like a sticker all the way around and then do my final fuse or my only fuse onto my my background fabric because doing it this way I can just kind of keep adding chunks to it and maybe and I'll be overlapping the fusible just a hair so obviously if I had enough enough of this I would just I would just put a big giant piece on this whole thing if I could All right, I'm hoping this is gonna work. This is kind of an odd way of doing this. This is like a time-consuming odd way of doing this, but I think it's gonna be a little bit better than just um, going it alone. All right, this is gonna kind of go on the back of this piece. Oh, I guess I didn't quite make it. This could be a bit of a disaster, but I think we're gonna be fine. Oops, there we go. So this is what it's coming down to and I have limited uh, limited supplies here, I suppose. I'm just gonna slowly go around this whole thing. Maybe I'll take some of those papers off later. Just where it was overlapping, I was taking the papers off. Let's just go all the way up like that. Ooh, this might get crazy in a little bit here. Oh, I have to trim this out beforehand too, don't I? Mm, okay, I think I'm gonna try and keep the papers on for the, the rest of it, cause this is gonna just get annoying with the cuts but I, I might be able to leave these papers on and then just take them off um, before I fuse it I don't I don't know it's a bit weird for sure a bit weird I am Gina so Gina's asking aren't you supposed to leave the paper on until you trim and uh, I am. I, I, what I'm really supposed to do is fuse fuse these pieces down, then pull them all off. But I was thinking, oh, if I just leave the sticky part, I could overlap them and then I won't run into this situation where it's fused but I have paper here. I was thinking it would be easier, but now I'm thinking that was a mistake. But let's, let's just kind of keep going here, see what happens. This whole thing, like I said, it could be a mistake. If you cut the shape first, it would be easier. So uh, you can cut the shape first. Uh, however, the problem is we want to trim, we want to trim um, this fusible at the same time. So I don't want any overlapping of the fusible over the edge. That's why I don't want to trim it first. Although I could fuse like this little area now, maybe. I can't fuse here because I already took the paper off. But there, so now maybe I can take off these little pieces. There, and now the fusible will be kind of more stuck down. 
Oh yeah, I could put try to put the paperback on those. Well, but any any little bit that I'm off is going to kind of um, it's going to uh, get on my iron, and I don't want that. All right, so where the part where it's over this other paper, it's not sticking very well. So hopefully, I can just kind of get underneath there a bit, pull this out. All right, good, that seemed to work. Now let's get this paper here. Oh, sometimes I just make things a lot harder for myself. Today is one of those days, I think. <laughs> All right, but it, it is fusing. So these are the parts that are fused. I just need to keep going around. We don't have, it's not that much more. It'll be fine. Here, this one I'm going to get right here right away. It's about right there. I think I'm a little high. Okay, let's get some of this arch on here. Uh, after it's fused, I don't really need to leave the paper on So I'm not I'm not too worried about that. All right, I think I got one half of the arc. Let's get the other half here. Oh, everyone makes their lives harder sometimes. <laughs> yeah. My goal in this is to have a perfectly cut edge with a little bit of fusible just on the edge. So I will just have like a tiny little edge of fusible on this whole whole thing is, is the hope. Yeah, I'm not too worried about my scissors. We're gonna go like this. All right, let's give this area a try. Get a little bit of this down. Enough that it'll stay in place. That's all, all I'm concerned about right now. It's just a little bit more fused. All right, this little guy underneath here. Ah, come out. <laughs> All right. Can't have that much um, hiding underneath the next one, I guess. We're almost there. We're doing it. Oh, I got a lot, of, a lot of little towns or little buildings in here now. Okay, it's about right there. I think maybe I need a little bit, a little lower. Well, I'm definitely not wasting uh, um, fusible on, on like a really big piece, which is what I normally would have done. All right, let's get that little bit. <laughs> yeah, the only other time, Barbara, I did anything a little bit like this, which is wacky, is the last one of these blocks. So on the on the Orophil March block where we had those mountains, 
I didn't think I was going to have enough fusible for for that project. So I did the same thing. I just kind of got the edges of it all. And uh, um, then I actually, then I had just a little bit left here. So I'm kind of doing the same process, although <laughs> it's on a little bit more difficult fabric doing it on this, this dark, dark one. And I think we're on all that goes down to there. Good. All right. We can get the start of going all the way up here. Yeah, I mean, this isn't, this definitely isn't my normal way of working. It is, it is for real just trying to use up what I, what I have here. All right, let's fuse those. Get a little bit further over. So I'm I'm definitely not trying to get my iron on any of these parts. I'm a little worried about over here where I didn't fuse it. Although I could probably put some parchment paper there. I'm guessing this is basically like parchment paper on the top here. We could give it a try. I do have some parchment paper um, nearby. I'm curious. I'm curious about that. I, I'd like to give that a try. All right, I got the little arch up top here. Oop, that's just the back. I'm definitely not worried about my scissors cutting through this just because my Kai scissors, my fabric scissors is pretty dang awesome. It can cut through anything, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, and... We just need kind of our last little bit there. I think it's about maybe that much. Really preserving this stuff now. That's true. So Leslie is saying the overall feel of the block will be kind of Im improved because I'm not fusing. And what she means by that is... Oh, I don't really need to even do this whole side. I just need to do this little bit right here. Ugh, well, now I'm now I'm glued. Now I'm in it, so let's just do it. Okay, yeah, we're covered. Um, the feel of the block, as in, like, how flowy it is, will definitely feel better without this whole entire piece being covered because this is going to add stiffness um, and uh, this whole middle area, I mean, it's stiff now because I have this paper on the back, but, um, that whole area would definitely have a stiffness to it when the block is done. Cause it, it's just going to have more, more there. All right. I think that kind of worked. Um, so now this is the part that I didn't fuse. Okay, I did want to try with parchment paper, though. I don't know, let me know if any of you have done this with fusible. Hmm, but is it going to... I don't know if I want to hit this side with anything yet. You know what? I think I might just try and leave this. I'll, I'll even leave this paper here. Let's flip this around. It's going to be super sticky, so maybe I'll just do it on the... On, the, um, on my surface here, my um, table surface, surface. Let's attempt to do this real trim here. All right. So now I'm going right on the line here. And on this outside line, I might actually go a little bit further. Well, I guess I didn't go as far as I wanted to, but that's fine. All right, so now all these pieces I'll toss. I'm going to just kind of try and carefully move this around. That's why you're using a glue stick. So that was my original plan, Marlene, was to use a glue stick on this. But then I was like, oh, maybe I have enough of that stuff left over. But now I'm thinking glue stick would have worked fine. So in that case, I would have just cut all this out. I would have trimmed it like how I'm trimming now. But I would have... um 
put little glue stick pieces on. Oh, this piece is coming off a little bit. I would have just glue sticked the edge of it and then sewed it down. Um, I, I think this is still going to work though. A little unusual for sure. Ugh, I'm just a little stuck. I think I'm going to get all of these vertical lines. Then I'll come back and get all the horizontals. Same with over here. Oh, you just had an orange creamsicle float. That sounds amazing. Oh, you use an applique silicone mat to protect your iron. Oh, that's interesting. I'll have to look into that. These little guys I can get. Uh-oh, here's that other side where <laughs> the side is totally sticking to the table now. Oh, goodness. All right, let's just do these cur these uh, horizontal guys quick before I try and move anything. It's wanting to come off of the... Um, freezer paper more than anything. Oop, I missed the fusible there. Watching your real struggles make you feel about your own adventures. That's good, Sharla. Yeah, because this is crazy. This is getting super dumb now. Um, but we're getting there. Uh, we definitely have a mess going on right here that I'll need to kind of fix a little bit. But here you can kind of start seeing right on the edges. Now I have these nice sharp edges with these like little bits of glue basically on. So I just have to finish this area over here, which is the part that wasn't fused. So we'll see how that goes. I have a sticky mess over here too. But it's starting to look all right. We're, we're doing it. <laughs> Hi. All right, I'm gonna actually try and hold this off the ground a little bit. Oh, you know what? I still need to do it from this direction though to get in there. Oh, it got stuck to me. Yeah, let's do this easy part at least. This 
one little thread. <laughs> you can tell that I'm in like full concentration mode because uh, I just, I can't talk. I gotta just like fully concentrate. That's, that's when you know. Ugh. I should just have the supplies I need on hand instead of dinking around with, with this, but um, I think it will be the best in the end because we will have um, that nice um, flowy center. Like it won't, it won't have all the fusible in the way. All right, one more cut. Oh, I got that bottom to do yet. Whew, we made it. Okay, let's just do this bottom line quick and then we can take off this um then we can take off the freezer paper here. Okay, so let's take a look at this now. All right, oh that's right. I have to take this paper off. So right here this one's a little goofy, but I think um, once we fuse it, that'll be fine. This paper we can take off now. All right, I think let's just get this on to my final piece here. <laughs> uh, let's just fuse this puppy. We need to move on from this applique part. So, all right, here we go. Um, I'm gonna just put it at the bottom here. That's, I'm guessing that's what's in the instructions. I'm just paging up. Yeah, we're just um, black assembly. So I'm just looking at the assembly part here. Use the sky template, trace, blah, blah, blah. Um, skyline template, fabric after cutting. Yeah, we just fuse it and then we sew it on and then we add all these extra details. Yeah, all right. I'm going to flip this around. I still have the paper on. Let's line up the bottom. I'm a hair off, but that's going to get sewn into the seam allowance, so I'm not too worried about that. All right, we kind of arch into this zone just a little bit. All right, I think this is fine. So now this was all sticky, so I'm actually going to press the, the, the stick and stitch not the stick and stitch, the um, steam a seam 2 is sticky. So I think by just pressing, it's going to help kind of get these things in place. Now we can peel that freezer paper away. And we'll get a, we'll get a sense of this finally. So I didn't fuse the sides. So I'm gonna have to be careful here yet. There, so it's kind of sticky here, but nowhere else. I think these these fellers are gonna have to get kind of pushed down a little bit. All right, let's just adjust. I think we're probably fine here. It's looking cute though, look at it. All right, there was a little goofy thing here. I think I could just take my stiletto. I think I got a, a few little fray bits. I'm gonna just swoop that underneath here a bit. No, no fusibles sticking out anywhere. I think we're good. I am gonna give this a fuse and we will permanently get this on here. I do like these lines going up though. That was kind of cool. All right, let's just make sure that's heated up again. So it is just sticking around here. I don't have, it's not sticking at all, oops, on, on any of these parts down here. So all this is kind of free. We could even cut away uh, some of this extra fabric here um, later if we wanted to, just, uh, you know, if we want like a nice strip of fabric yet, because this is going to be kind of the bottom. So, all right, let's, uh, let's do it. All right. Oh, you know what? This is where the the uh, um, 
parchment paper could come in just to keep my iron uh, keep my iron without getting any glue all over it. So I really just need to get the edge here. I don't really need to press anywhere else. I'm thinking that should be plenty, but just because we have the paper here, let's do, do a little bit. Oh, that's true. I could glue stick the bottom down while I work. I think that's a good idea. You think you'd cut the underneath part because you like the fabric? I, I kind of think so too. Like there's no reason really to waste all this fabric. So I might just, you know, go uh, uh, like that across. But I think I'll, um, I'm wondering, I think I'll do that when, after I have this kind of sewn down. I, I think I'll only sew the skyline. I won't go down here at all. So I'll just sew this little butt. Bit. And once it's sewn, then I think, yeah, then I think I will get, um, take off that, uh, four inches or whatever down here. Okay. So we are fused. See, so now, now all these edges are nicely down. So it was worth it. I think, um, putzing around with, with that. Cause if I would just glue this, I think I'd have like kind of those rough edges here. And it, once I wash this, it'll get rougher and rougher uh, cause it is a raw edge applique. But for the time being, that is pretty well attached. And we still have the flowiness of the rest of it because it really is only these little, little parts here. <sighs> All right, you guys, we made it through that. <laughs> All right, let's uh, sew this down. I, You know, I have some light colored thread in the machine still, and I think I'm just going to go with that. I think the light colored thread will add some texture to this. I'm kind of okay with that. So let's let's go over to the machine and let's let's truly finish off this applique by permanently attaching it uh, with some sewing. Yeah, yeah, I think so, Barbara. I think um, now that it's sewn down or, or pressed, fused, fused down, I, I am kind of happy that um, I, I tried to do that fusible. Plus, I used a little bit more of it up, which is always nice. Okay, let's see. We are going to be kind of moving, rotating around. I think I'm going to start on this side. All right, I guess we just start, right? So you could do fancy stitches. You could use all sorts of stitches, uh, but my machine does one stitch. It does a straight stitch. So that's, that's what we're using. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna add a little back tack here. That's kind of like tying a knot. I'm not using gray thread. I'm using a, uh, um, a cream thread. And I know it's going to contrast. If I wanted it to match perfectly, I, I, I would have, I should have switched to like a gray thread. But you know what? There's some tan in the rest of this. So I think it'll actually add some nice texture, texture to this. It'll be like a little fun border. I'm kind of tempted to maybe go around it twice. So this is gonna be a lot of stopping and rotating. So this is what's making it permanent is the sewing. Uh, the fusible in theory is permanent, but I don't trust that going through the wash a, bit, a bajillion times. But this is pretty invisible uh, because my my gray is so textured. Uh, it's it's difficult to to see the stitching anyway. I think I'm gonna try and get a little closer to the edges. And I mean, this is raw edge applique, uh, so after a while through the wash, this is just gonna get more and more kind of beat up and that's just going to be the look of it and that's totally fine too yeah it's nice at, at least these are straight edges <laughs> a little bit of ease for the for the evening yeah it completely blends in you can hardly see it at all um 
I mean, you really can't hardly see it. So I'll, I'll show you guys once it's off the machine a little bit more closely. This is also a test in my machine being able to start and stop at the right point. Yeah, it's actually blending in quite a bit more than I thought it was going to. And if you want it to not blend in, in so much, you could use a 12 weight thread. I mean, I'm still using the 50 weight thread, but a 12 weight uh, would really kind of add some heft to it. It would look like embroidery a little bit more. Uh, I'm doing it maybe a hair over an eighth of an inch. Now, typically when I do this, I would probably get closer to a 16th, but it's just ending up being about an eighth of an inch. That just seems to be where I'm kind of landing. So I'm kind of going with that. I don't think it's going to matter so much. Yes, an open toe foot would help too. So an open toe foot um, or like a, a, a see-through foot, I'd be able to see the edge and everything a whole lot better than this foot here. I, this is the only foot I have for this machine. That'd be something to find. Although I can only do a straight stitch. It doesn't do a zigzag or anything. So I don't know what the point is for looking for a different foot for this machine. But uh, some of my other machines, I would have maybe switched the foot at this point so I could see a little bit more. All right. I think it's working out pretty well, though. I am a pretty good of an eighth of an inch, though, away. Maybe even a hair more. Yeah, you can kind of see it a little bit on this darker purple. Squeaking along. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised, Deborah. Deborah is saying that the thread is blending in very well and you can hardly see it from here. Yeah. I can hardly see it from here, except for maybe on this purple that I'm on right now. The rest of it is really blending in quite a bit, which is actually making this purple maybe a little bit more fun that you can see it. Uh, that was maybe one stitch too many. Oh, Kathy, I love it. I love this machine. So I haven't been able to use my other machine because that presser or the feed dogs stay down and I can't get them up and I haven't I haven't messed around with it for a while so it, it's definitely been fun using this one I do have that old um singer but that one's been uh that's that's the one that was uh John's great grandma's uh but that one's been screwed into a table we have a or a cabinet for that and uh I, we, we bolted it in versus it being out. So now I can't just grab it and bring it down here. So this is kind of the only kind of mobile machine. And I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it actually. All right. I think I might, you know, I'm going to go up here, but I think I might come down the edge to about here uh, just to hold that piece a little bit. My needle is getting a little gummy. I can see a little, little gum line on there. So um, from the 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 stable or the the fusible, try and get that goop off. Ooh, now I'm getting a little far away from the edge. Oh well. Oh, but uh, all these little papers are going to stick to it on the other side. My little trash is kind of behind, behind the sewing machine now. All 
All right, so now at the edge, I'm gonna try and get right up against it like a 16th of an inch. So it can still be in my seam allowance. And I'm only gonna go down to here because that's where I wanna cut the fabric away, I think. All right, let's do a little back stitch there. Let's kind of lock it in place. All right. I am only gonna go around once, I guess. Good enough. Let's get the other edge. Oh, that one's fine. All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, let's just see what it looks like from far away to start out with, and then I will um, show you guys uh, the stitching, what that turned out like. So it's coming along. I think this uh, this kind of made, it, it toned down this crazy fabric here. This is maybe still a little light, but again, we were, we were working hard to find a mauve. <laughs> and again, I think if you if you mixed all these colors together, it might be might be mauve. But yeah, so here it is up close. So you can see it on the purple, my stitching, but everywhere else, I mean, like right here, it's blending in quite a bit. Um, yeah, quite a bit. And it is still very flowy. I think I might actually just take the scissors here and cut away this underneath fabric. Because then we can save a little bit of this. I'm just doing it. So I'm cutting like a quarter inch of away. Uh, a quarter inch away of the applique. But yeah, I mean, this is a nice piece of fabric that I could use yet. Yeah, look, that's a that's a good chunk of fabric. So we're saving that. Flip this down again, and there we go. <laughs> All right, you guys, I think that's what we're gonna do tonight. Uh, tomorrow, so there's still, there's still like this fun little kind of, I don't know, moon sun thing here and Verona stitched on to here. Uh, so it looks like for this sun shape, it's kind of a fake trapunto. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a piece of batting and put it where the sun, or like the moon sun, I don't know, <laughs> where that moon should be. Uh, and uh, I guess it's a sunset. So the sun, we'll call it the sun. And we're going to take that batting and we're going to sew around and around and around there. And you know what? I'm wondering if I should get my other machine out that I can do that free motion stitching with. Uh, we'll see. I might do that. Um, I could always hand embroider this too, but I think we'll get the machine out. And then, uh, let's see. Uh... I wonder how it says, transfer the Verona and the sun templates to the block. You can trace with water soluble pen pencil. The sun position is two inches from the top. Okay, so it says the exact position. Okay, stitch also Verona and done. Okay, so it doesn't say how to stitch Verona. Maybe we'll get some, maybe we'll get some actual uh, embroidery floss off or out because I think that might be the easiest way to stitch this. We can do that really quickly. And then we could pick a color that kind of pulls this all together. Like maybe here, maybe Verona is this pink or something because that would kind of bring the pink into more of the piece. Because for me right now, the pink kind of seems like it's kind of weird but if we did the um if we did the text in pink too it would complement it a little bit you know what this is looking like to me uh this looks like a uh lighthouse and this is the beam from the lighthouse <laughs> like a lighthouse that's just uh spinning spinning around here <laughs> so all right i think the sun the sun, okay, the sun kind of overlaps this whole area. Oh, that'll be cute. So we'll get a piece of batting, put the batting down here. And you know what? Let's let's hand embroider the sun too. I think that'd be an easy way of doing it. But I'm still going to hand embroider with the, uh, with the batting underneath because that's going to give us kind of a cool raised effect. That's called trapunto. Um, well, that's, it's like a faux chapunto. Real chapunto, you're actually stuffing batting in or um, stuffing in like underneath an actual, um, like a pocket almost. We're going to kind of fake that. So tomorrow I will get a little piece of batting. Uh, we will stitch that with, um, we'll do hand embroidery and then we'll do um, hand embroidery for Verona. I think we're going to get this guy done tomorrow 
and <laughs> I think it's looking, it's looking okay. <laughs> I'm still, still, um, not totally happy that these aren't three different mobs, but, um, uh, one of my, one of my, um, rules was I was going to use the fabric from that bin and there weren't no mobs in there, but oh well. <laughs> All right, I'm going to flip you guys around. We'll call it an evening. All right. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still working out if I like, like these fabrics. I think, I think the embroidery is going to pull it all together though. It definitely helped getting the skyline on there. It does look like a, a light beam to me. I like it though. It's fun. It's going to work great in the rest of the quilt for sure. Uh, so I'm stoked. Awesome, you guys. Thank you again. Uh, thanks again for the face mask orders. There are a few more in the shop if you're looking for a stylish face mask made by my brother. I think they look really good for guys. I know guys might not want like flowery or cutesy, cutesy masks, so this would be a good one for them. Uh, like I said, we have a few more in the shop. Uh, this is the last week for the embroidery of the month, so make sure you grab uh, that little sloth uh, before it leaves. And Friday is the new embroidery of the month, uh, embroidery month for May, so uh, be sure to check that out coming up this week too. I'll get this up on YouTube, and uh, thanks uh, for watching tonight, you guys. Good night!